Hello, my name is Maida Mar and I would like to guide you through LabVIEW. LabVIEW is a tool from National Instruments that allows us to create um, very great applications, especially for industry application and testing system, everything that is automation. So it's a very nice tool. It's a graphical environment, which is very important. We are going to create application using icons uh, mainly. And why icons? Because when they created LabVIEW, it's what with the objective or the idea that the users were going to be engineers. And engineers are familiarized with the tools, the instruments, which are, for example, oscilloscopes or multimeters. So we were going to be familiarized with these tools. So they built the icons as inputs and outputs. Uh, so we get familiar with it. So LabVIEW is multi-platform, which, which means it runs in Linux, in Mac OS, and in Windows. It's multi-paradigm, which means you can create object-oriented uh, programs or functional programs, any of these two. And also it's a compiled uh, program, a compiled software. You need to build your application in order to execute it in the target systems you may have. And also, you can have different targets, not only for the operating system, but also because uh, you can have, for example, real-time controllers or you can have a desktop uh, PC. So you can have different targets and you can do all this uh, with this tool. Once you land and you open your LabVIEW version, you're going to get uh, this window, which is the Getting Started windows. You can see here LabVIEW 2019, I have installed this version, but actually you may install LabVIEW 2020 already. There are uh, three types of uh, ways to install LabVIEW. You can have the student edition if you're a student, which is a, a free license. You can have the community license if you're not a student and you don't plan to a commercial use for LabVIEW, then you can use the community edition and if you're a professional user then you should purchase a professional or basic license there are different prices for it then you can have uh, access for commercial applications so you can when once you land here in the getting started window you can open an existing project you have already created or you can create a new project so let's go creating a new project you're going to see this uh, little window here when you can have uh, different uh, templates. So, for example, you can have a blank project or a blank BI, which is what we're going to start with. Or you can then have the template for different architectures. If this is empty, but you can have a simple state machine, a cute message handler, which is when you have a producer consumer architecture and then you can have the actor frameworks which is a more advanced architecture which uses a lot of object oriented programming the instruments driver project and touch panel projects in case you have an ni touch panel and then you can have some sample projects uh, for acquisition mainly data acquisition and control and these are for desktop or for real-time targets, which I mentioned, for example, National Instruments has real-time targets. Uh, for example, there is also MyRio, Serio, NIDAC. You can use any of these as, as targets for a LabVIEW application. So let's go with the basic first, and we're going to create a blank project. And double click here. And we're going to see this. This is the project explorer window, which is very important for us because all the files in our project are going to be listed here. So our project name is the root of our project. And then the computer here, my computer, is the target of the project. Is where I plan to, to execute my project, which is in my computer. If you have a different target, Let's say you have a, 
uh, my Rio or Rio controller, then it's going to be also here in the project. So you're going to start seeing all the targets inside your project tree. The dependencies are all these libraries that you don't explicitly add to your project, but that are necessary for other BIs in your project, or the functions in your project to work. So LabVIEW adds those are dependencies because are needed in your application, even though you don't explicitly say you need it. So, and the build specifications is where you compile your applications and also you can compile libraries, uh, package libraries, there are different uh, S specifications, build specifications you can create. The most common one is an application, of course. At the end of your project, you want to compile something and that you want to distribute, so you probably are going to need an application and an installer. So, of course, there are several functions here we could explore, but knowing this and the basic when you can create a new file, a new BI, or you can open files, you can save all the files inside a project. You can save the project, open and, and in project, save project, um, or filter how you see the project, if you see the dependencies, the, dependencies, the specifications. But these are the basics. Uh, to start with Labium, we don't need for the moment to go in more detail with all the other options we have. So let's go create a, a simple BI and then we go to the other cool stuff uh, on a later video. So this won't get too long. <laughs> so let's go and create a new BI. A virtual instrument would be the equivalent to having a function in a different uh, languages, let's say uh, Python languages and other scripting languages. So this is a function. And in order to add the arguments of the function and to get the output of the function of this virtual instrument, then I'm going to play, close for, for a moment this context help. Then you need to add controls and indicators. The controls are the inputs of your virtual instrument and the indicators are the outputs of your virtual instrument. So I can go here and add a numeric control and this is going to be the input of my function and then I can go here and add an indicator and this is going to be the output of my function. So a BI opens two different windows as we can see here. One window is the front panel of my BI and the other window is the block diagram of my BI. So it always, always, a BI is going to have two windows, the front panel and the block diagram, always, okay? So which is which part, what it does? For example, the front panel is the user interface of our application. So everything we want the user to interact with should be in the front panel. So there is no actual code in the front panel. You just see the inputs and outputs or any other result you want the user to see. Or if you want to interface with another BI, then should be as an input or an output in the project in the in the VI. Okay? Then how do you access the numeric inputs and outputs or any other inputs or outputs? Then you right click on your mouse you absolutely need a mouse to work with LabVIEW you right click into your mouse and then you're going to see the controls palette and then here you will see all the different options you have to create uh, controls and indicators in LabVIEW to have a very nice user interface you can also uh, customize many of these controls and indicators to get a modern view if you want to, which is absolutely necessary. You want to create nice user interfaces. So there are many layouts, for example, here you can create tab controls, splitters, and uh, you can create charts to have a very cool way to display signals if you want to. 
uh, trees, uh, data containers, like clusters, uh, ma matrix, you can include uh, arrays, numerics, booleans. So you have a lot of options here to create the user interface and inputs and outputs. Then everything you add in the front panel is going to appear as an icon in the block diagram. But in the block diagram is the place where you actually add your code. So if you want to create uh, the code, the function actually of that VI is going to be in the block diagram. But it's graphical, so you're going to get everything as icons. So you can access the functions panel in the block diagram. Right click on your mouse and you're going to get all the functions available. For example, in the structures, you can create for loops, while loops, uh, case structures, events structures. You can have arrays, you can have numeric controls and functions. I'm sorry, numeric functions, Boolean functions. And there is a very large variety here of uh, functions you may have. And these are all by default when you install, when you install LabVIEW. Most of these are going to be present here for you. So let's go for a simple example. I just want to add two numbers. So I already have one control, which is, I'm going to call A, and then uh, I shrink here. Okay, and then I'm going to create another one that I'm going to call B. You have A, B, and you can display the result in, C, in this numeric indicator here, C. As you can see, everything was added and updated in the block diagram. And I want to add these two, these two numbers. So I'm going to the functions palette and add the sum of these two numbers. Yeah, A plus B. And how did I unite this? Well, by default, when you approach to uh, the terminal here, uh, then it's going to appear this little instrument, which is a wire. Because of course we're just we're, <laughs> we unite our instruments with wires, so it makes sense. But we wire the input A with the terminal of this zoom here, and we unite the input B with this terminal, and then the output we wire here with C. So it's quite simple. It's just wiring as you would do with your virtual with a real instrument. So now to execute, we have here the option we can run once, we can run continuously uh, because of course this is going to execute once and it's going to stop. Then if you run continuously, it's going to stop and then just start over and start over and start over. And then you can stop the execution, abort completely the execution, uh, or you can pause the execution. So let's put some numbers here that make sense. For example, two and four and then execute and we are going to get the sum of these two numbers. So that's it. With these instructions, we create a sum in LabVIEW. Uh, so if you like it and you want to see and learn more of LabVIEW, please uh, subscribe and hit like, and I will create more videos like this to teach you a bit more how to work with LabVIEW. Thank you very much and goodbye.